Well, welcome to the Beyond Cinema studio presented by Celebs.com, Marina Zenovic. Um, talk about, I mean, obviously you've been working in and around Roman Polanski for the last few years, 2008, Wanted and Desired. Now, follow up to that odd man out. What made you want to spend more time with this subject? Um, well, I finished the film. I worked on uh, I worked on One and Desired for five years, and in two thousand and eight, uh, it was finished. And then his lawyers decided to use my film as evidence in reopening the case because I had uncovered some illegal ex parte communications between a, a former DA and the judge in the case. So I thought, oh God, this is a short. <laughs> I've just got to follow this. And my own mother was like why are you doing this, move on to something else. But something was going to happen with the case. And um, so I started filming in January of 2009. And uh, we filmed a couple of court hearings and um, were, you know, feeling victorious. In September we won two Emmys for writing and directing. and not but like a week later I got this phone call on a Saturday saying Roman Polanski's been arrested in Switzerland right. and somehow in that moment it became a much bigger film and so immediately it was just like looking for more money to film more and just uh, we were like gobsmacked. But also it put, it put you into the movie um, so instead of before when it was kind of this story now all of a sudden you're a character. Um, for a documentary filmmaker, obviously some doc filmmakers make a choice to put themselves in their film. How was that for you? Did you have to jump any hurdles as it, like in your own head as to whether to do that or not? Well, I've been in a couple of my movies. I used to be an actress, so I made a film called Who is Bernard Tapie, uh, where he wouldn't talk to me and so I put myself in the movie trying to get to him. So people knew me from that and I then made a film called Estonia Dreams of Eurovision about an American going to Estonia where they won the Eurovision Song Contest. And so I've done that and I'm very comfortable. That's kind of fallback <laughs> mode. But with this film, I actually became a character. Not that I wasn't in the previous films, but it was more serious and it was different. And my tendency is to go more funny because I like to have fun. Um, and I, th I think in documentaries, audiences really like to laugh. And they don't get a lot of opportunities. And um, I just became part of the story. The movie became part of the story. I, I went from being kind of the girl who made that amazing film about Roman Polanski to the girl who got him arrested. Yeah. And that was really strange. It was, I didn't have an agenda when I made the film. I just was curious. Um, about the subject and kind of followed my nose and and then next thing I knew you know how many years later he got arrested so what's your relationship like with him now my relationship with Roman Polanski is complicated in the sense that um, you know I feel partially responsible for the whole case kind of coming up again. I mean, I, I, I feel like he respects me as a filmmaker, um, as a documentary filmmaker, but um, it's, it's kind of complicated. I mean, he's in his late 70s, and um, the hardest thing for me when he was in jail was just that this, you know, 70-something-year-old guy was in jail, and was I partially responsible? I mean, when you're that old, I think you, all you want is time, right? I mean, time with his children, time with his wife, yeah. time to do more work. Um, so. But of course, you've got people on the other side of the equation who are probably saying, well, at least he's going through a little bit of pain for something that perhaps he didn't go through enough pain for. Yeah, there are a lot of those people. Yeah. So, so in terms of the communication by those people and others to you, like, what have you felt has been more overwhelming? Have you been more overwhelmed by how many people support and have supported Roman over the years, or by the people who still are kind of have that kind of vindictive nature that he still needs to pay for what happened back in 77? Um, I don't think the people who write negative things on blogs have enough courage to kind of write you directly and say negative things unless they're crazy. But I've gotten a lot of emails of, support of the first film 
Um, I, I just continue to be fascinated by uh, the subject and how it just divides people. And my producer and I were talking about it last night. It's kind of like, oh, are we going to tell them that we're doing this movie? Because it just, with some people, like it gets their back up immediately. And they just have such strong feelings. And it's almost like they don't want to hear anything because of the crime. And um, I was just trying to be a, a, an anthropologist. Do you ever think about what, what or who Roman Polanski would be today if he had have done that, you know, the, uh, that incident hadn't happened back in? I think he'd be the same person he is today, but he'd have, you know, he wouldn't have spent 2009 in jail. I think he's made peace with it. I think the mother and the daughter have made peace with it. It's everyone else who hasn't. So it's almost like their story that everyone else wants to own a little bit of. Um, but because it is the people versus Roman Polanski, it's the people. So she doesn't really have any, any rights then. So all this stuff is interesting, you know? Yeah, so why call it Odd Man Out? Um, it was very hard to pick a title. And uh, he has said that that's one of his favorite movies. And it just kind of made sense. Um, yeah. So to go from Roman Polanski to what's it, Richard Pryor, <laughs> right? It's the next project. Um, how's that been? Has that been a, a, a breath of fresh air? Or is there, is there a sense of um, that you have to kind of honor his legacy as well, like with, with Richard? It's not hard to honor Richard Pryor's legacy because he was such a genius. Um, each movie has its complications and, you know, it's kind of just telling the best story you can. Um, it's, it's different. I mean, when I made a film about Bernard Tapie, this French former politician, uh, what, what did you say? French former politician turned actor turned, you know, he went to jail for fixing a soccer match. I mean, I never thought I would find a better character. I, I was like in mourning after that, like, how am I going to find a subject for a documentary? And then I read an article about Roman Polanski and I just kind of became fascinated in it and have spent a long time on it. Uh, and then I find myself in, in the next position, like, oh my God, how am I going to find someone like Roman Polanski? And someone brought the Richard Pryor story to me, and it's pretty fascinating. So I'm I'm knee deep in interviews, and and it's just fun to try to piece together a life. And like in terms of you know just the life of a documentary filmmaker who's doing these kind of profiles and going into these people's lives, do you like how much do you feel like you need to move on from one person to the next? Like, do you leave them behind, or do you always kind of keep communication lines open? I stay in touch with most people from my films, which is kind of, it's just such a labor of love, and it's like going through an intense process with, you know, I still talk to Polanski's lawyer, I talk to the DA in the case, um, you know, who else? Uh, I don't know, now I'm thinking between both the movies, Sam Geimer, Right. It's weird, yeah. but it just is, I don't know, you become a part of each other's lives. Yeah. And do you think that they ultimately see you as a friend, like Sam Geimer? Um, she knows that I'm very straightforward, and I think she appreciates that, and I appreciate kind of what she's gone through. So, I mean, I, I don't know if we're... Friends, yeah. you know. Oh, cool. Yeah, I guess we're friends. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's a strange position to be in. It you, is. You've, you've taken on a responsibility for part of the story of the of the life that is Polanski. Well, it's funny when I hear you say what I do. It's kind of like, oh, that's what I do. Yeah. You know, I just do it and try to find money to do it, and I don't really think about anything else. I'm just kind of trying, and it's really hard. Yeah, because I'm still trying to work out whether you'll inevitably be famous or more infamous. Who? Polanski. Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> uh, 
Well, I did interview people who said what his obituary would read like. That was from the first film. Well, and what and what was your favorite advice? Oh, just he'll never live this down. I mean, and he's been trying to his whole life. So the fact that it would come up again 30 years later is just, I mean, the thing is when you have kids, everything changes. So I think, I think it becomes a lot more complicated. I mean, it's complicated for me. I have a seven-year-old who knows that I made a movie about Roman Polanski, seven-year-old boy. Who knows, it's Roman Polanski, Richard Pryor, like. <laughs> yeah. Almost sounds bad, but you know, I, I try to make honest, um, films about people and but you end up having to explain things to your children imagine how Polanski had to explain to his children and Sam Geimer although she had boys and she said no one wanted to hear it right I'm sure oh I gross mean, I mom I don't want to know we're definitely looking forward to talking about maybe what your favorite Richard Pryor story is now or later <laughs> <laughs> later so thanks for coming in it's been thank you very much appreciate it